up everybody this is Shadia and yes I am back with another video and today this video I will be talking about being confident while you're in a wheelchair so if you're interested and you want to know a few tips that I can give and that I, I've experienced in my life and been in my situation stay tuned all right let's get into it everybody so like I said today, I'll be talking about being confident and in a wheelchair. Um, as most people who are in wheelchairs already know that it's difficult being confident and having to be in this position. Because for one, you don't necessarily feel a part like everyone else. And for two, technically, I have a more unique situation. I wasn't born this way. I was, this actually happened to me, like I said, when I was 16. So, due to that, I already had a lot of confidence at 16 being an individual who walked. So, trying to regain confidence after being in this position and after this happened to me, it was a little difficult. But, I found a few ways of how to figure it out and how to, you know, feel confident in who you are even though you are in this situation and really don't want to be. So, the first one I would say would be fake it till you make it. I feel like with anything in life, if you want to have confidence, you have to start just believing and telling yourself you have the confidence to do it. Basically faking it until you make it. And once you're able to do that, or once you're able to just fake it till you make it and go out into the world, even though you don't feel as confident, you still do it, confidence will start to develop and you'll start to have it because guess what? Once you achieve the goal or once you accomplish it, you'll think, okay, so I really did it. And even though your confidence is still a little shaky, you did it so you at least know that you're capable of doing it whatever it may be next thing i have to say is do things afraid i've learned that in my life even though there's something you want to do and you may feel apprehensive about doing it it's still important to do it afraid because if you never take a risk you'll never gain anything what do they say nothing ventured nothing gained yeah that's pretty much how it is so if you never step out on faith or just just step out and believe in yourself and do things even though you are afraid, still do it. Nothing can ever be really gained from that. Being stuck and afraid and not doing things and being sheltered and just not wanting to do it, nothing will ever be gained. So it's important that you venture out. And guess what happens when you venture out? You'll eventually gain the confidence. See? <laughs> nice play on words, right? The next one I would say would be leaving the house. When you're in this situation, if you stay in the house, stay cooped up, never leave, never get out, never do anything, never interact with people, you're not going to have any confidence because you haven't been out there to do it. It's important to take the first step to leave your house and get out and interact with people so that you feel more confident and you feel comfortable being around people. When you are comfortable, you can have confidence because it is a familiar situation, it is a familiar vicinity. When you're comfortable and you actually step out and do it. So I would say leaving your house. If you don't leave the house, you're definitely not gonna gain confidence in doing something different and doing something new. You'll just be sitting around in your house doing what you always know. And yes, I did just talk about being comfortable, but you wanna be comfortable doing new things. So when I say comfortable, I mean get comfortable doing things that are new, things that are adventurous, things that are adventurous, things that you are not used to. Get comfortable doing stuff like that. Next one will be making friends. So let me tell you something about making friends when you're in a situation like mine. As you all know, or as I've talked about in my previous videos when I was in college, I did not have a lot of friends in college because of course people were a little afraid of my situation because it's the unknown, a lot of people don't dibble and dabble or deal with people in wheelchairs. A lot of people don't have relationships with wheelchairs. A lot of people don't even know people in wheelchairs. Hell, when I was 16, I didn't know anybody in a wheelchair. The only person I knew in a wheelchair was me, myself, and I. So, it's important that when you get out or whatever it is you're doing when you leave your house, try to make friends. Go places where you can interact with people who are accepting of your situation or who, like, for instance, church. Church is a good, a good, um, a good place to start I think. You can start going to church on Sundays if you believe in Christianity. If you don't, that's fine. To each his own. Everybody has their own religion. Just do something that or go to an event that you feel like you will be comfortable and a little more accepted. Like for me when I first left the house I went to the mall. 
I love the mall. Yes, there's a bunch of people there, but guess what? That's where I'm comfortable because I love fashion. I love to shop and do things like that. So I knew that it would be a place I could go that I could actually engage with, whether it's shopping. So once I engage in shopping, I can engage and talk to other people who are doing the same thing as me and be like, hey, how you doing? Things like that. And you can spark up a conversation. And that way, guess what? You have potentially made a new friend when you start talking and interacting with new people. The next one I would say is speaking to people. So generally, I can just be honest with you. I'm not the type of person that speaks first. Like, hey, how are you? Like sometimes I just feel like I have to get that vibe from you that you're one of those people that'll speak back. Not all the time do I just walk in a place and I speak. Sometimes I may speak to just random people, but it's not often that I get that. But it is important to be able to speak to people because once you speak to people, you sort of break the ice. You break the monotony. People already don't know your situation. They really don't know how you react. A lot of people are inquisitive. They have questions. They want to know things. And not that you're obligated to answer anybody's questions. But at the end of the day, if somebody wants to know something about me or they're curious, I'm definitely going to help them have a better understanding. Curious. And besides, for me, when you are inquisitive about my situation or just about me in general, I actually like that idea because I feel like you actually want to know more about me and who I am as a person. So speaking to people is a great way to help boost or develop confidence by going out and just randomly speaking to random people. That way you can feel like, oh man, like so people do see me as a person or people don't see me as weird because you're in a wheelchair. and Maybe they don't know a lot of people in wheelchairs or they don't have a relationship with people in wheelchairs. Once you go out and you actually start talking, interacting, and engaging with people and people see you out more, trust me, the stairs don't dissipate. But, so... Um, last but not least, I would say pet talk. Pet talks to yourself. It is important that you talk to yourself. Boost up your confidence by just basically having little pet talks and saying, hey, you know what, I can do this. Even though I'm afraid, I'm going to do it. It doesn't matter. I have to do it. I have to do it to basically gain something, which is confidence. That's what we want to gain. So I have to do it to gain confidence. So I need to take, go ahead and step out and do it. Just have pet talks to yourself. Tell yourself how great of a person you are. Tell yourself that things aren't really as bad as they may seem because a lot of the times they're not. A lot of the times we in our head have that perception like, oh my God, this is going to be horrible. Or, this is bad. And really, it might not be that bad, but you just step out and take the time to actually do it. So it's important that you give yourself pet talks. Just talk to yourself, try to boost up your confidence, boost up your self-esteem, and just have those talks with yourself so you, in turn, can feel better about what it is you're trying to do or what you're trying to achieve. Okay, everybody, so yeah, that, those are my one, two, three, four, five, six, my six steps, actually, six steps of boosting confidence while in a wheelchair, and I'm telling you, I am telling you, if you are in a situation like mine, and you feel trapped or stuck in the house, try just doing a few of these things, like I said, faking it till you make it, just try it, you know, just pretend that you feel good about this, or pretend that this is something you want to do, even though you may feel apprehensive about it, just still do it. You make it, do things afraid, even if you're afraid, still try to do it. Still try to step out on faith and take that leap of faith and do it. Uh, leaving the house, definitely leaving the house will help boost your confidence and your self-esteem. Making friends is a great confidence booster because when you make friends and they actually genuinely like you, they'll tell you how great you are, how amazing you are, and they'll make you feel more comfortable, especially when your friends are like, hey girl, let's go out to uh, let's go out to lunch, let's go out to dinner, and you're like, okay, cool. You start to feel like you are a part of the crowd. I, when I went to college, I had amazing people in my circle that made me feel wanted and welcome. You know what I mean? They didn't make me feel like I was a um, black sheep or like I did not belong. They really made me feel welcomed and I love that about the people that I met in college. And speaking to people, like I said, go out. Try to speak to some people even though they feel weird. Just say, hey, how you doing? And people, well, people will generally speak back to you. And also pet talks to yourself. Don't forget, it's important to have that talk with yourself to boost up your confidence and your self-esteem. And these things, I'm telling you, they'll work wonders. You just have to practice it. So I appreciate you all for watching this video. See you in the next one. Peace.